Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest, beefiest news online. What do we got today? Baby Daddy Mommy, Sweet Living, an Alien Church? Sigma Tiger, all up in your grill. So what do we got today? Let's dive right into it. Detransitioner describes agony of pregnancy after changing to male as a teen. Makes me feel like a monster. Okay. Image of the individual. Before. After. After before. Uh, on June 3rd, Prisha Mosley, 26, gave birth to a healthy baby boy via C-section. That doesn't seem remarkable for a young woman of childbearing years, but until about two years ago, mostly identified as a man. In her fruitless attempt to change gender, she pumped her body full of testosterone. At 18, she had her healthy breasts removed and was left with a mangled, scarred chest. Her hormones were and remain wildly out of whack. In fact, when Mosley, who has detransitioned, saw a doctor because she missed her period, she laughed when he asked if he, sorry, if she could be carrying a child. Sure. She was in a relationship with her boyfriend, but she assumed she was infertile. Well, <clears throat> surprise, surprise, I still can't believe I got pregnant, and I still can't believe he's healthy. Why? Because you pumped your body full of safe and effective gender-affirming treatment, as we're told. Uh, but this miracle did not come within a myriad of complications and medical unknowns. Mostly is in uncharted waters, the first of a small group of detransitioning women who became mothers, baby mommy daddies. Medical interventions such as cross-sex hormones can affect fertility and Mosley started using testosterone when she was still developing. Every single thing that happens with the female body, especially when they are carrying and birthing a baby, has a purpose, said Mosley, adding that her body's mechanisms were greatly affected by testosterone. Who would have guessed? He, yikes. Absolutely terrifying. Um, <clears throat> after being essentially experimented on by doctors under the guise of gender-affirming care, quote-unquote, she's now sharing raw, intimate details about her unexpected but very fraught path to motherhood. I could go on and on about how tremendous that weight is, Mosley, who is now an independent woman's forum ambassador, instead of speaking out. But what's worse is that it can happen to other people. The pain of imagining that someone else could feel or experience what I'm experiencing makes the pain of being a public case study numb. It doesn't compare. No one came and saved me when I was little. No one told me the truth. Sadly, Mosley now knows the truth and it hurts. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, you know, we all feel for this individual who was, you know, led down a path of destruction, literally. And uh, now, like, you know, as you get older and you experience life and you realize certain things that you felt when you were young, you don't so feel so more. Like, hey, guess what? The tiger likes country music. When I was young, I thought country music was the dumbest thing I had ever heard in my life. And now it's pretty good. All right, well, St. John's, Newfoundland, Newfoundland, East Coast, Canada, trans man thought it was, wasn't possible for him to get pregnant. Then it happened. Forrest Sandifer, the experience of pregnancy and fatherhood has been challenging, but rewarding. Um, don't mean to assume here, but I believe the one holding the baby is the baby mama data. All right. Last year, Forrest Sandifer of St. John's wasn't feeling well. He was having stomach issues and found no answers, no relief after multiple doctor visits. After Blowbrook and other tests, his physician started talking about what some fear most, cancer, specifically a pituitary gland tumor often causes gigantism, elephantism. <clears throat> Further testing and MRI was scheduled, but the 27-year-old had a gut feeling. While waiting for the next appointments, he took two more tests at home, and the mystery was solved. There was no tumor at all. He was pregnant. When Sandifer's doctor confirmed his pregnancy, she told him, I didn't think that this was even possible. Neither did he. Sandifer, a trans man, has always wanted children, but thought adopting was his only option. Since he had been on testosterone for more than a decade, he hadn't menstruated in eight years, and only one active ovary. His doctor said his chance of conceiving was less than 1.8%. As it turned out, those were the only odds he needed. 
And after years of hearing he could never be a real dad or have his own family, his son Lupin was born August 19th, 2023. Since Sanford didn't know he could even carry a child until he was already pregnant, he says pregnancy for men needs to be talked about more often and that if carrying a biological child is a dream, it's possible. It's also a nightmare for the child when he grows up and realizes the cards he was dealt contained the deuce seven. All right, Pokemon star Rachel Lillis dead at 46, God rest your soul. Voice actress behind Jesse and Misty characters dies after cancer battle. Huh, well we covered cancer on Monday. And tons of people are getting it, uh, mainly in the abdomen, collectoral, intestinal, anal, yeesh. Well, anyway, this poor soul here uh, unfortunately died at the age of 46. There's Misty from Pokemon, if you're a fan. Uh, yeah, so uh, it was unexpected. We're completely grief-stricken. My heart breaks losing my dear little sister, though I'm comforted knowing she is free. Okay. Uh, well, the most important part is she's remembered many of you that she happily met at conventions, for instance, and related stories to us by experience, and all the people she appreciated meeting. In Pokemon Universe, Lilith also avoided beloved singing Pokemon Jigglypuff and played the character in the popular Super Smash Bros. Nintendo game, according to Variety. She also had roles... Okay, okay, here's the meat, all right? It was revealed Lilith was diagnosed with breast cancer in May. And she'd been living in a nursing home since January. So I would assume that she was sick and dying in whatever, in January. Or maybe it's 2023. Not sure. But it's a very short window. That's the point I'm trying to make is that uh, people are presenting with like stage 4 cancers at younger and younger ages. And it's unprecedented. Scenes from Leicester Square after an 11-year-old gold and 34-year-old woman were stabbed in broad daylight. We pray for those people. Uh, the attacker's identity has not been released. I genuinely wouldn't take my children into London and feel safe doing so. All right, let's just have a quick look here. The hat of the attacker. Okay, we got some cops lurking around, some bobbies. What are they doing? Gathering evidence, talking to witnesses. What happened, they say? Well, some jerk came out with a knife and started stabbing people, clearly. Well, here is the scumbag that just stabbed a little girl in Leicester Square. And many people may notice that he's not a um, Muslim or doesn't look like what would typically be identified as a Muslim. This is what people have identified as a white guy and an in-your-face to the migration protest. Well, guess what? This guy... is a gypsy migrant. Okay? Meet the real Kamala Harris. Yeah, I am a radical. You need to get radical about what we are doing and right. take it seriously. As President of the United States, I am prepared to get rid of the filibuster to pass a Green New Deal. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. We have to have a buyback program, and I support a mandatory buyback program. I believe it will totally eliminate private insurance. Let's eliminate all of them. But would you support changing the dietary guidelines? The, yes. The, you know, the food pair. Yes. Yes. To reduce red meat specifically. Yes, I would. Raise your hand if, if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Where do you stand on defund the police? This whole movement is about rightly saying we need to take a look at these budgets. Harris asserted that ICE is perceived as the modern-day Ku Klux Klan. Are you aware that there's a perception? I see no. Are you aware that there's a that perception? That puts ICE in the same category as the KKK. Is that what you're asking me? I see no if peril. I'm not thinking. I see none. And yeah, I am radical. We need to get radical about what we are doing. All right, she says we need to get radical. We need to get woke, stay woke. All right. All right, let's move on. Why are you voting for Kamala Harris? Harris rally attendee. Let's hear it for herself. Why are y'all voting for Kamala Harris? I don't want to lose my rights. Like, I'm a trans man, and I'm gay, and I have been pregnant, and I've had an abortion before, and I don't want to lose that. 
I'm afraid of not being able to be myself anymore because from what I've heard, Trump's America doesn't want me to look like this. So that's why I'm here today and that's why I'm voting blue. What about you? Um, I've also been pregnant and had an abortion before. I was a minor and it would have been dangerous for me to properly, like it would have been dangerous for me to carry a baby with like personal reasons and everything. Um, I also like, I'm very, you know, Alternative, and I feel like if Trump were to win, I wouldn't be able to Alt. like express myself through my Thank you. and everything, and wouldn't be able to have the piercings or the dyed hair or the tattoos that I want. And, you know, I would be able to be myself. And um, my dad's very pro Trump, and I'm just very pro Kamala. <laughs> pro Kamala. Yeah, I don't. You know, it's just going to cause a divide at all. Yeah, it definitely does. He thinks that uh, Kamala's going to ruin the country, but I think that Trump would do worse, like a lot. Like Kamala is going to be good for the country. Well, of course, yes, absolutely wonderful. Why are y'all voting for Kamala Harris? All right, uh, let's go ahead. I don't know if you've heard Kamala talk about. Uh, anyway, just listen up, Charlie Kirk. Vice President Harris will say repeatedly, "What is the quote? The quote is that we can see what." can be unburdened by what has been. Is that word salad or Marxism? It's Marxism. That is, in fact, not at all word salad. It is a Marxist. As I said on Twitter the other day and got mocked relentlessly by the media for this. I said it's a Marxist incantation, as a matter of fact. It's like a spell. So you can see the possibility of a world that's unburdened from its own history, which is exactly what Mao Zedong did when he launched the campaign of smash the four olds, the four old characteristics of Chinese society. They were going to make a new China that was going to be unburdened by what had been in the past of China. This is what the Soviets, the Bolsheviks, did when they took over power in Russia, is that they were going to make the new Russia. They're going to make the new man, as a matter of fact. People could become unburdened by what has been so that they could see what could possibly be in the terms of a socialist utopia. So, Madam Vice President, when she says that, I assume, given that her father was a Marxist and a professor, I assume she knows what she's saying, and I don't buy her idiot valley speak <laughs> shtick one bit. I think she's far more smart and far more savvy than conservatives have given her credit for, and she is an outright Marxist. It is very, very clear in her language, and that's what the Democrats want to nominate for president right now, which is kind of horrifying. Boom. Well, absolutely horrifying. Absolutely. It's not going to get any worse than Kamala Harris, okay? And Tim Walz, whatever this dude's name is. All right, moving right along. Uh, new mask trend growing across Europe. Please don't ask how or what for. Could be anything in clown world. Yeah, so uh, go ahead and check this out. Shouldn't have cut it so quick. So what could possibly be going on here? Does anybody have any idea? Because I do. I'll tell you what's going on. They've talked about it. Again, production value on today's episode is just through the roof here, people. All right, so uh, it's facial recognition, okay? They've come out and they've stated that they're going to use facial recognition and uh, social media to identify people. It's literally the beginning of ushering in social credit scores, just like China. The UK is like one of the most monitored uh, states on earth. There's cameras everywhere. So these people are trying to protect their identities. That's all. And there's been people walking down the street who have literally seen the camera turn around to avoid it. And police have come up and said, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir. Or like have put up like things like that. And the police are like, no, no, no. And they're like, say you're not allowed. We must have your image, which is insane. It's absolutely mind boggling. All right. Uh, Muslim abuser didn't know that sex with a girl of 13 was illegal. No big deal. You can come to our country. No assimilation period. Completely different culture. You don't need to learn anything, okay? We'll put you up in the luxury Hyatt Hotel. Meals. You don't like them? I mean, these are five-star meals. Oh, you, 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 you don't like eating that stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, well, well, we'll try and get it exactly what you want. No problem. Anything else? You need more money? Yeah, no problem. Okay. 
Anything else? You need more police support. Okay. You'd like us to do the prayer with you? Yeah, sure. Okay. And uh, can you like not commit crime? Oh, you don't. You don't think that we're we're subhuman? Oh. Well, sorry. All right. Adil Rashid admitted traveling to Nottingham and having sex with the girl. He met the 13-year-old on Facebook and they communicated by text and phone for two months before they met. Premeditated. It's not like he didn't know. He was educated in madrasa and had little experience of women. Said he had been taught women are no more worthy than a lollipop that has been dropped on the ground. Added he was reluctant to have sex, but that he was tempted by the girl. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh. This guy's totally innocent, all right? A Muslim who raped a 13-year-old girl he groomed on Facebook has been spared a prison sentence after a judge heard he went to an Islamic faith school where he was taught that women are worthless. So, yeah, so, okay, no problem. Well, here in our country, with our laws, we don't think that way. We're all about diversity, though. Equity and inclusion. So, which one is heavier? Diversity and inclusion. Equity. Maybe it should be D-I-E. Die. How about that? All right, you don't need to know anymore. This guy's a jerk. He doesn't care. He totally gamed the system and was like, hey, man, you know, sorry, I just don't know what's going on here. Even though that's a terrible Arabic accent. It's more Italian than anything. All right, Trump's stunning return to X panics the EU and UK governments. Here's why. Former President Donald J. Trump has returned to X with a string of posts made just after noon on Monday, preparing for his interview and in spaces. Uh, with audio interview with Elon Musk, which was viewed by like 200 million people or something like that. And everyone's like, oh, it's terrible. It's really bad. How could anyone follow this? It's really terrible, blah, blah, blah. And uh, even some dude from the EU was like, uh, yeah, Elon, if you do this, then you're like perpetuating uh, like negative energy online and hatred. Okay, you're inciting hatred if you let Trump have a platform on the biggest, one of the biggest like, social media things. Like, so don't do it, okay? And then uh, the misses, the actual misses, Von de Leyer from uh, the EU was like, we didn't say that. No, he did that on his own. But, I mean, if they stopped it, they probably wouldn't have said anything. Are you better off now than when you were when I was president? Our economy is shattered. Our border has been erased. We're a nation in decline. Anyway, whatever. Since then, former president has taken X to promote his interview. And uh, it went well. A lot of people viewed it. Uh, a lot of people didn't like it. So Thierry Breton was the one he posted the letter demanding Musk adhere to the EU's Digital Service Act, specifically about spreading any disinformation, hatred, or incitement to violence. Because this is definitely what his voice is like. I can tell just by the way his words are. Thierry's letter also mentions recent unrest referring to the anti-mass migration protests. They were terrified that people were going to find out that these people are trying to censor everything. How often should men ejaculate? To lower their risk of cancer, according to major review. What? Yo, what's going on here? So this is interesting. Men who want to lower their risk of a common cancer should masturbate and have more sex, according to this research. Well, I mean, there you go. Go up to the wife and be like, here's the report, honey. You know, I don't want to die. A new review of existing studies dating back 30 years found... The more often men ejaculate, the less likely they are to develop prostate cancer. Researchers recommend climaxing 21 times per month because the literature suggested it lowered the risk of disease by one-third. I mean, that's pretty good odds, if you ask me. 21 times. So, you know, you do 75% of uh, the days of the month. 30% reduction. I mean, do the math. Like, that's pretty good. That's better than some uh, drug trials. Well, interesting. Uh, so symptoms of prostate cancer is needing to pee more, difficulty starting pee, weak flow, blood in the urine or semen, rushing to the toilet, like an urgency, uh, pain in the testicles. Yeah, so go ahead and uh, enjoy yourselves. And uh, go ahead, show this article to the wife. Let her know. The recommendation for routine ejaculation, particularly among specific age groups, presents an opportunity for proactive prostate health management. Yeah, of course. Proactive prostate health management. That's what you say to the wife. Boom. The ugly truth. Less attractive people live shorter lives than those deemed better looking. Yikes. What about people with masks? 
Uh, it may seem unfair, but being unattractive could mean you are more likely to die younger than your good-looking peers. In fact, ugly men live nearly a year less on average than those who were considered good-looking. Negligible. Who cares? An unattractive woman died on average two years earlier than those who are more blessed in the looks department, according to a U.S. study published in Social Science and Medicine. There you go, people. If you're ugly, you die a year earlier. Two, if you're a woman. Hundred-year-olds share what they always eat and what they never do. I don't drink soda at all. Definitely uh, sugar soda. Try out Zevia, though. Have a look at that. Z-E-V-I-A. Yeah. It's like carbonated water with soda flavors, and it's um, sweetened with stevia leaf extract. The foods in your daily diet play a major role in how healthy you are and how long of a life you live. In fact, one of the key practices of people living in blue zones, which are areas of centurions, people who are 100, eating a diet mostly of plant-based foods, fruits, vegetables, and nuts. That makes sense. Let's check it out. Elizabeth Francis, 115, oldest living person in the U.S. She eats everything. Always grew her vegetables in the backyard. Never saw her go to fast food restaurants, much like Chick-fil-A and all the places I like to go. She never did that, her granddaughter said. Never smoked and doesn't drink. 102 years old. Deborah Z. Kelly still uh, runs a fitness resort and spa three times a week. I'm a pescatarian. She only eats fish for meat, nothing else. Typical breakfast, yogurt, banana, whole grains, salad for lunch, meal of fish, salad, and baked potato. Let's try something new. Shirley Hodes, 106. I did like to eat a simple, balanced diet without too much sweets. She was adhering to guidelines. She was taught at the Red Cross nutrition course she took during the Second World War. 99. Daisy McFadden. Her meals usually include oatmeal, cranberry juice, and a banana, salad with beets, cucumbers, tomatoes, chicken, or fish, lean meat, steamed vegetables, fresh, fresh fruit. Boom. I mean, it's just that simple. Human versus robot match point. The moment Google's robot uh, destroys the human. So uh, the Olympics were an absolute joke. If you've seen many of the things there. Uh, Peter Thiel, uh, he's working on like the, uh, the enhanced Olympics where people are going to be taking steroids. And he's also talking about the Apple glasses. And I'm certain that he will uh, implement some robotics into it. If he can, AI Olympics, let's go. Deep mind. So there it is, just challenging the humans. And of course, the robot's going to be better. Of course. New toddlers in their diapers walk away fine after being thrown from a Jeep that had flipped on a Texas highway. The kids stood alone, a good sign, just scraped up. Check it out, just hanging out there. Anyway, crashing out there, but the kids just hanging out on the road. Hackers may have stolen the social security numbers of every American. How to protect yourself? Well, after about four months of notorious hacking group claimed to have stolen an extraordinary amount of sensitive personal information from a major data broker. A member of the group has reportedly released most of it for free online and marketplace for stolen personal data. The breach, which includes social security numbers and other sensitive data, could power a raft of identity theft. Class action lawsuit against Fort Lauderdale, Florida hacking group USDOD claimed in April to have stolen personal records of 2.9 billion people from the national public data, which offers personal information to employers. Yee, right? Crazy. So, uh, yeah, the full NPD database. So it could be more than just America. Obviously, 2.7 billion records. AT&T had their stolen as well. So, uh, watch out. Yikes. Unemployment rates jumped to 33.5%. 8.4 million South Africans now jobless. Yikes. So, uh, yeah, they're totally seeing it. South Africa, once a burgeoning uh, economy, now just totally ravaged. Companies are pulling out of there like crazy, and there's no jobs to be had. Highest rate since 2022. So it's been bad. It stays bad. But guess what? It's not all bad. She wasn't here in any of this. The first deaf Miss South African crowned after a divisive competition. Here she is here. Mia Loru became the first deaf woman to be crowned Miss South Africa following a divisive competition which saw one finalist withdraw after being trolled over her Nigerian heritage. Hmm. In her acceptance speech, Miss Loru said she hoped her victory would help those who felt excluded from society achieve their wildest dreams just like I am, of course. I mean, last year it was all men winning, wasn't it? She said she had been the victim of black-on-black -black hate, highlighting a particular strain of xenophobia in South Africa known as Afrophobia, which targets those from other African countries. Yeah, 
all right, so black on black racism. I thought it was just white people that hated black people. It's more like everyone hates whites and Asians. That's what it's become. DEI. All right, new data shows violent crime dropping sharply in uh, major U.S. cities. Well, what the heck's going on? New preliminary data from U.S. cities shows a sharp drop in violent crime in the first half of the year. More than 25% in some communities as the COVID era crime wave recedes. Well, why it matters? Well, guess what? They're not prosecuting anything. They're literally just arresting people. Okay, if you look at the arrest rates versus the prosecution rates, that's the true tell. Okay, so there's a 6% decline. Why? Well, they're releasing, catch and release. It's like fishing. All right, alien secrets, what the heck is going on? Well, finding the truth. Is the Vatican hiding UFO secrets? Eerie link between aliens and church as whistleblower claims Pope knew about crash. Ooh. All right, well, veteran extraterrestrial lobbyist Steve Bassett told the Sun it was clear the Catholic Church knew about UFOs and likely has documented evidence hidden in their archives. Yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, the U.S. government has come out and basically said that they exist. But why? You know? Elon says he doubts it. Why? Tens of thousands of records in the Vatican archives with some claim to include information about aliens and UFOs. There's Hitler. He was fascinated with all the occults and the UFOs. He believes the Catholic Church even thinks ETs are important, and the institution has hinted at their existence in religious paintings. Yeah, the Pope also said that they are not under the same rule of law as God, which is very interesting. Weird thing to have said. Uh, the Catholic Church we have always known has been aware of the subject going back perhaps hundreds and hundreds of years. It's gone so far as to say whoever these beings are, they, the church, would be happy to baptize them if they wanted to be baptized. Extraordinary information sits locked away in the Vatican Library, archives by the church's knowledge through the centuries. Yeah, and Harvard, you know, the bastion of fact and education, states government might be downplaying evidence aliens live among us disguised as humans. Never know what you're looking at. At this point, we can safely deduce it's more likely than not that aliens exist in some form. And according to the new Harvard study, aliens might live among us disguised as humans. Ooh, the humus, the human flourishing program at Harvard recently investigated four crypto-terrestrial hypotheses which state the unidentified anomalous phenomenon you may involve forms uh, of non-human intelligence already present on Earth. Human crypto-terrestrials, technologically advanced ancient human civilization that was largely destroyed long ago. The hominid or theropod crypto-terrestrials, a technologically advanced non-human civilization consisting of some terrestrial animals which evolved to live in stealth, perhaps a hominid, or alternatively a species much more distantly related, Bigfoot. Former extraterrestrial or extra-tempestrial crypto-terrestrials, extraterrestrial aliens or intertemporal descendants who arrived on Earth from elsewhere in the cosmos from the human future respectively and concealed themselves in stealth. And of course the magical crypto-terrestrials entities which are less likely homegrown aliens and more like earthbound angels relating to world inhabited by humans in ways that are less technological, less than magical, who are known in European languages by names like fairies, elves, nymphs. And uh, Tucker Carlson has come on and stated that uh, he believed they're interdimensional beings. Boom. So there we have it. Uh, I thought we had something there uh, extra about the Olympics, but we'll check in on Raygon on Friday. You'll definitely want to tune in on this because it's unbelievable the scandal uh, that's plaguing Australia's breakdancing scene. Sigma Tiger, signing out.